The uh, first item on the open work session is the Compensation Allowance Commission report. I think the council has uh, received that from, uh, as you remember, from uh, a prior meeting. And in the uh, Compensation Allowance Commission report, there's no one here from the commission. Um, but there were three recommendations. Um, one was for the executive's office. The second was for the, um, the council uh, individual, or the president, the vice president, the council members. And the third recommendation was for the sheriff's office. Uh, so I would open the, uh, the work session by um, taking one at a time, I guess. And the first one would be the uh, recommendation for the county executive of uh, 124000 <coughs> Any comments or discussions? Yeah, I mean, I'll just make a quick comment. I mean, we appointed the, the folks to the commission to make the recommendation to us. You know, they've done their homework. Uh, they've made this same recommendation to us uh, at least, I think, the last two times, and not necessarily that exact amount, but for uh, raising the compensation for the executive and, you know, I... You know, appreciate their work, and I think we should follow their recommendation. Any other comments? Um, I asked a couple people to be on the uh, compensation committee, and when I did, I told them I probably wouldn't agree with what they came up with. So, <laughs> anyway, um, I will recluse myself from the conversation about um, Wacomico County Council members because I am planning to run for county council again. But I will have input on the um, county executive. We have um, s some examples of um, other counties. It's pretty much um, mirrors ours as far as um, um, population and budgeted. That would be Cecil County, and uh, I think what's their um, their executives like ninety five. 99, 99, 99,000. So that's um, that's what they have. So they're the closest as far as mirroring Wacomico County. That's about um, what the county um, commission suggested was about a 46 percent increase in salary. So any other comments? I um I sent the council the link to uh, Frederick County and Cecil Counties pay scale for their executive and similar to what Mr. Holloway said I had a chance to talk to both of those executives to feel if that was appropriate. Frederick County definitely has a different demographic than Wicomico. Cecil County um, is probably the closest and when you look at um, the, the size of the departments, what they are tasked with doing um, and I had a conversation with the county executive. She felt that that was an appropriate salary for what she's doing. Um, I, I think what Mako put out in their suggestions for a county similar to ours at 99,000 or 95, 100, I, I would think that is a better gauge on what we set the salary at. I feel much more comfortable with that. Any other comments? Yeah, I think a couple more comments. The, I mean, they, the, the two that were, as Councilman Ackley just mentioned, we have Frederick was the other one, which they just significantly increased theirs. I believe they increased it to 135,000. 35. Right. So, you know, they're, you know, they're now at 135,000. You know, even at 124,000, as recommended by the commission, you know, that'd be the second lowest executive in the state of Maryland. Uh, so, and, you know, ours was originally set back in 06 at 85 and has never changed. Uh, you know, just simple CPI would have put it beyond the 124. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and the other thing to, I think is important for us to remember too is, I know we're talking about the executive now, but we're going to talk about council and then we're going to talk about the sheriffs. But we can't do, if you're going to reduce the executives, then you got to reduce the sheriffs. I mean, you can't have the sheriffs being more than the executive, I mean, the duties of the executive is, you know, how many, how many departments do we have, Ms. Hurley, uh, overall? I want to say 12. Well, we have more departments than 12. We have 
and, 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 but you know, mm -hmm. but we have yeah, it's a significant number of departments, and our budget is a hundred and sixty plus million dollars. Uh, you know, you know, I mean, the, you know, the, the executive is the CEO of the county, so you know that kind of sets the bar that everybody else is going to follow. So you know, we're uh, now, but you know, we appoint the commission. The commission's done their work. I think at the end of the day, we should support their recommendation. Now, Cecil County, when I spoke to the different executives, Cecil County's the demographics are more like Wacomico's. But I, I hear what you're saying. They, I mean, Frederick did a significant increase. One of the things that CISO County didn't have that I liked that the commission put in here was the COLA increase. I think that's also important to include. Yeah, actually, if I could back up to the, I think one point on Cecil, they have not had the executive as long as we have. Only a couple of years. They've been longer than yeah. we have. They, no. they only became an executive system only six years ago. Hmm. They were county uh, commissioners only until uh, I think it was 2018. We'll say that Frederick. 20, yeah. County. Oh, pardon, 2016, I think is what maybe it was. Yeah. I will say that Frederick County is probably one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Maryland um, as far as population and, and its budget. Um, but um, Wacomico, you know, our population is basically what it was 10 years ago, according to the census report. It's not changed that much. And it, even though I support the compensation they recommended, I actually I do not support the COLA. I mean, I, don't, I think you know, the compensation committee meets every four years. So, um, you know, I, I would leave it up to them four years from now if they think the recommendation should change, then they can make that recommendation. You know, they want to make that recommendation based on the COLA, then that's fine. But I don't think just... Uh, you know, linking the COLA to whatever, you know, the CPI, whatever link. I mean, that can be, sometimes that can just be a dangerous uh, uh, thing to do. I mean, because it, it varies so much. But the fact they meet every four years, you know, they, the opportunity will be there to increase it again if we so choose. So, but looking at a COLA every year after or... You're saying not doing the COLA period and just let them reevaluate it in four let years. Let them reevaluate yeah. it in four years, right. Yeah. And their re-evaluation re 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 might be based on the COLA. Let's increase it, mm -hmm. you know, on, but let's let, to me, let's let them make that recommendation. That's in our charter. They meet every that four time. years to make that recommendation as opposed to, uh, you know, I, I think personally, I just think we should focus on the salaries, put those in place for for the four years until they come back with their next recommendation. And I think, too, uh, the issue of a COLA would probably have to be for another work session because um, the state of Maryland would, we'd have to, we'd have to have some type of state legislature change, if I understand correctly, because it's actually state statute, Mr. Wilbur, that, that defines uh, the increase process, and it's once every four years only. So legally, as it is today, we cannot give a cost of living increase on an annual basis. This will go in the charter for the executive. Excuse me? It'll go in the charter for the executive. As far as if we were to, to consider a COLA? Yeah. But doesn't state statute say that we can only do it once every four years and we right. can't? So we'd have to change state law too, correct? Well, yes. As far as meeting to make the decision, mm -hmm. that have the compensation commission. That's, that a, that's like an every four years. year. Right. The, that's every four years. But um, I don't believe that the county itself can make incremental increases to the executive or the sheriff's office based on state statute. What I would recommend is that a number be struck and not put a COLA in. Okay. I think that may conflict with this four-year yeah. uh, okay. state law. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the... Um, the recommendation is 124,000, so I guess we would want to take a consensus on council. Uh, what we eventually decide upon will also, <laughs> and Mr. Weber, I had one more question for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a matter of process. Uh, what we decide upon, uh, if I understand correctly from what Ms. Hurley has said, uh, any decision that we make as a council uh, would then have to go on the ballot, be put on the ballot. That's correct. correct. As far as the executive, that number is in the charter, and it'll go on the ballot. So understanding that process, I know we can't give a multiple choice, but uh, and I don't think that this council should say, well, we should vote on 
eight, uh, 90, uh, 100, because that will get, you know, the, the public will agree to that more easily. We have to, I think, make a decision what we really think is uh, a, a necessary uh, number uh, based on the, the responsibility. And the public will go yes or no at the election. So there's absolutely no, no uh, in between, no wiggle room that we no. would have with the public. It would have to be one number only. It's one number, yes or no. I, I think you're wrong. <laughs> I, the charter says that it's got to be a, a majority vote by the council. I don't. This, I don't think it has anything to do with. Laura, can you read? Well, the, the majority charter? vote yeah, would have to get. There. It would be a requirement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, if I can speak to this, there's been a little bit of confusion because um, Mr. Wilbur is correct. The county executive salary is stated in our county charter, um, but the second part of that provision does give the county council um, authority to increase that. It specifically says the county council may, by law, um, pass by an affirmative vote of the majority plus one member, so you would need five members, um, adopt the recommended compensation or a reduced compensation, but may, but may not increase the recommended, I'm sorry, how is I going to take my glasses off? The county council may by law pass by an affirmative vote of the majority plus one of the members, adopt the recommended compensation or reduced compensation, but may not increase the recommended compensation. Any increase or decrease in compensation which becomes law during one term of office shall not become effective before the next term. So once we vote on it, though, um, do we vote on it to make it um, effective or do we vote on it to move it forward to an item on the, uh, on the ballot? I, I think I'm going to change my opinion based right. on what you just read. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I was right. You were wrong. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I, I will admit that. <laughs> okay. So this does not go. I think to the it's going to be a, a legislative act by a super majority of the council. Yes. That's what Laura okay. just read. Okay. Yeah. All right, that would be a legislative bill or a resolution? I think it could be a resolution. I don't think it has to be a legislative bill. No, it, I know it the could county. Be a resolution. Yeah. Okay. If you want to do okay. it that way. Because by law, it can be either one a legislative yeah. bill or a resolution according to the definition in the charter. It's, it's a single shot okay. number. And I think just one more quick question. The very last sentence about, and which also gets to Mr. Cannon's question, it goes into effect the next term. The next term. Yes. Right. Starting. And a question for Mr. Next. Wilbur. Um, speaking of the sheriff, um, the sheriff's increase, is th is the county council required to vote on that, or can that be done um, through another means? I'm trying to think. For the sheriff? Yeah, for the sheriff. The council can vote on it. But is it required? Can the sheriff uh, do it himself by going to the legislature? I think the council sets that. I, I, we did it last time. Yeah. I, I had a discussion with somebody, and they were telling me that the sheriff can go to the state to get an increase. I would have to look that up. It, could you please? It was handled at the council. It was handled at the council. Okay. It's been several years ago. I think we increased it five or ten thousand dollars in. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether it was required that we did it. But, right. Well, that's my yeah. question. Is it required? Please. And uh, what would the process be for the sheriff? Would that be a resolution or a legislative bill? I think a resolution. Resolution, yeah. Okay. So um, getting back to the county executive, the recommendation was $124,000. And um, we would want to have some type of consensus on the $124,000. So um, I guess we would take a take a uh, somewhat a, of a, a vote to see, even though it's not binding. Um, exactly. As I as I said, I'd I'd like to see that reduced somewhat, just to be equivalent to counties with the same demographics that we have. Councilman Hastings. I'm okay with the recommendation. Councilman McCain. I support the recommendation. Vice President uh, Davis. <laughs> Still have to get elected, yeah. Mr. yeah, right. yeah he's right. Not a, he's not elected. He's just. I would say yes, you could. Yeah. We can always get a confirmation from the ethics commission. I go along with recommendation. Uh, Councilman Holloway. 
No, I'd, I'd be more comfortable with 95 or 100, so I'm not going to support the 124. Councilman Dodd. I'd be more comfortable with um, a lower um, salary, such as uh, 100,000. I would be in favor of it. Now, um, we have four votes there, but you're saying that, but now does it require five or not? It does. For a simple resolution? It, yeah, the charter says charter says super majority, majority plus one. So yeah, it requires five. That's fine. Okay, so um, where are we going to go from here? For my own clarity, can we theoretically would could this be an option to be put on the ballot at one hundred twenty four thousand, uh, and then have the voters decide? You, you really want it to fail, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd rather see us make that decision. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what the charters and intended that's why they have the compensation review committee every four years so uh, i mean personally i just think we come back with the resolution and then the seven of us you know if we don't have a super majority then we got to figure out a super majority that wherever that might land yeah i think uh you know we had 11 people who we chose 11 very responsible individuals from this community that did a lot of work over several months and they reviewed every single county in the state of Maryland. They reviewed um, much more than just salaries. And uh, that's the conclusion that they came to. Um, I certainly personally don't see where I would want to second guess what their work is and what their, um, what their final decision was. Uh, you can always have uh, concerns and you know, second guessing, but overall, I haven't spent months uh, evaluating it. Uh, we would need another number then. We would need another number yeah. if someone's not comfortable with the 124. I, 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 I hate to be a horse trader, but, you know, we, we've had, what, three people mention 100 and four people mention 124. I mean, my gosh, I'm in the real estate world. You know, I, I, <laughs> I, I, on, I hate to sit here and say let's, you know, on, let's split it down the middle. But, you know, if we go down the middle of that, that's, you know, we have a consensus, you know. I mean, you know, at a... Uh, well, as a buyer, going down the middle would mean I would go to 100. <laughs> well, then I'll go to 124 and make it a resolution, and we'll see what happens. Okay. There you go. There you go. I just, so when we increase this, the, the executive salary, I'm assuming we're going to make the council's increase relative to the executive. I mean, if we're looking at the other counties like Frederick and Cecil, and we're doing this percentage increase, is it going to be consistent? I don't think the percentages need to be consistent. Right. It's, two, it's just uh, two different, we deal with them separate. Them separately, okay. Yes. So um, we'll take a number of 115. I was gonna recommend. Mr. President, yes. we, we do have our acting county executive here that he may be able to speak to some of the responsibilities of that position that would may help you guys make your decision. So do you want do you want to engage in that? John Pesota, acting county executive. I want to thank uh, Mike Dunn for all the work that uh, he and his commission did on this. Uh, to your point, council president, yes, they spent time in, in uh, doing this. Uh, in doing this. Uh, study. It was a, it's just as a clarification, it was uh, Mr. Derricker. I'm sorry. Michael was the charter review. Memo Derricker handled the. Uh... My, my, my apologies. Mm -hmm. he, he does so much, I get confused. <laughs> yeah. um, as county executive, basically what a county executive is, is the chief executive officer of a 170 million plus business. Um, with 25, over 25 funding departments, uh, 19 departments that I interface with regularly, approximately eight on a daily basis, almost 600 employees. Uh, I, I believe that uh, that was taken into account for the study, and that's what the recommendation came out. So if that gives any perspective as to uh, what you get for uh, uh, the 100 and 24, I believe, is, is the number that, uh, uh, then that's what, that's just a, a, a small idea of what a county executive does. But the county executive also has the opportunity to have 
a county administrator and an assistant county administrator. And um, they're the ones that um, basically do the day-to-day -day operation. I know the county executive is involved in it, but um, they also have um, the opportunity they, they don't have right now. Um, but they have the opportunity to have those people to um, do the day-to-day -day operations of the county. And I would say to that, that's a good point. Absolutely. Uh, that's the construct of the, of the current office. Uh, but my argument would be, as county executive, uh, the salary range will put the executive in that department. Uh, an executive is not a figurehead. Uh, he is actually an executive, a chief executive officer for, uh, for the county. Um, so to some degree, um, you could say, if you're trying to find talented people for the position, it's, it's going to come with a cost, uh, and that cost is the salary that uh, you determine. So to some degree, you can get you know, someone with less experience uh, uh, leading the county forward uh, or uh, whatever that if you lower the salary or whatever, then, then uh, to some degree, you, you may get what you get. So you would, you, you're suggesting that if we increase the salary, we're going to get a better qualified candidate running? I believe that you'll get a, a more talented uh, pool of candidates, absolutely, uh, because this is, again, not a um, ceremonial position. This is an actual boots on the ground, working hard every day. Uh, uh, to, again, take care of the county business, which I will argue uh, is ever increasing in speed. The, the speed of government, just like everything else, is becoming much, much faster. Uh, Decision-making process has to be uh, made faster. Uh, it, there's a lot of components, and it's just getting more and more difficult. So, so I think you, if, you, if you have a salary that's commiserate with the job description, absolutely. Uh, I so believe. what is the job description of the county executive? Because I see it as someone who represents the people and is in the community connecting with the people and advocating. I see the director of administration and the deputy director as someone who is what you just described. Yeah, the county executive oversees all of that. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, 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 you have to have a, a county executive that understands where all the pieces fit so that, uh, you know, your, your deputy uh, director, your director of administration, you keep everything in line. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, the, 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 the job description for the county executive is overly broad, absolutely. But I'll come back to the fact that it says he's the chief executive, he or she are the chief executive officer of, of, of the county. So, In any organization the size of Wicomica County, just out, say, the private world that has 600 employees and a $170 million budget, organizationally is going to have layers of management they're going to have vice presidents or deputy administrators whatever you may want to call them you know uh, that the ceo is uh, responsible for so uh, you know that's kind of my point i was making earlier you know with the 25 departments and 600 employees and 170 plus million dollar budget you know it's a big operation uh, you know the reality is you know frankly i think 124 is very low you won't find a, in the private world, you certainly won't find a, a CEO of a $170 million business earning $124,000. Uh, I guarantee it'd be substantially more than that, and especially if you had you know, 600 employees. But regardless, the uh, compensation committee did their homework. They did their homework correctly. You know, they compared it to uh, you know, similar positions across the state and looked at it from several different perspectives and came up with very re at the end of the day a very reasonable it's very reasonable compensation you know i guess i guess it's a little frustrating just arbitrarily for us to start throwing numbers around when we we appointed those people i, I you know i just i just get back to that you know when we were the ones that appointed them we should follow their recommendations Right. Just, just, just for clarification, on the 25, those are, those are also fun, fun, funding entities uh, such as the library. No, I don't, uh, obviously the county executive's office doesn't touch the library uh, except for as a funding mechanism. But for all intents and purposes, 19 departments and about half of those I touch on a very regular basis. Oh, right now, 
we do have one acting county exec. We don't have a an administrator. When and if we do get an administrator, the paying salary for the administrator is one hundred forty thousand dollars. I believe there's a range. I haven't seen the salary range that's uh, uh, coming out of the, the um, uh, salary study. Uh, however, uh, just as a reminder, the current construct, because of the resolution, uh, I occupy those two positions, the acting county executive serving as, as the county executive as well as the director of administration. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, going forward, I don't, I, I don't recall what the, what, what the salary is for the uh, uh, what the recommended salary out of salary survey? It's not in the survey, but when when Bob hired you, mm -hmm. he hired you at a salary of one hundred forty thousand. Am I correct? No, one twenty. One twenty. Yep. Actually, one twenty uh, with a five percent uh, uh, cola, yeah. which uh, you know, I did yeah. not take advantage of. That's yes. correct. So. so the current salary is one hundred twenty. One hundred twenty was my offer from uh, County Executive Culver uh, to come in in 2020 uh, uh, f uh, for the first year. So, so we're looking at a recommendation for the county executives less than what the county administrator would be getting. Absolutely. Which doesn't, doesn't make that's sense. Always been the, that's always been the case. I mean, it, ever since It's always the been the case because came, we've always underpaid the county executive. Right. Really. And, and I think to, to Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Ackley's point, uh, that may have been a distinction that was made at, at, at the time to, to think, well, uh, maybe the county executive is a, is a, to some degree ceremonial or or isn't as active as as uh, a county executive needs to be uh, in, in today's uh, government world. Um, so I, I can't speak to that when when that was all implemented back then, but I can speak to it now. Will the positions of uh, county administrator and uh, assistant county administrator, I mean, Ernie said it isn't in the study, but do you know for a fact whether it is in the study? I, I don't know for a fact. It, it, I believe so, but I, I, I don't know for a fact, but I will check on it. I'm wondering whether we should, um, it's, I know it's only a work session, but I wonder whether we should postpone the work session maybe until we do get the full results, because I know they came in in January. They're here now, right? The study is... The study is yeah, we're, we're, yeah we're, we're in the process of, of uh, uh, concluding it. I believe we're looking at the second meeting in February to present. So it would not hurt this council to have this discussion, the first meeting in March, as far as our timeline is concerned, Mrs. Hurley? I mean, council can take action when it feels it's ready. I think maybe it may be, give us a better perspective after we've seen the salary study for all the positions in Wicomico County to then make this determination. I know that this committee has already made this determination for us, but since there's some some uh, angst among members as far as following that recommendation, would um, everyone here be willing to maybe postpone this until we have the study in, or, or do you not feel that's necessary? Doesn't matter to me. I don't think I'll be changing my mind. Mm -hmm. no. All right, then uh, does the council want to go further as far as the council, um, the council positions, since that's not terribly relevant to a study? We can do the council positions now, but I think as far as the, um, as far as the executives and as far as the sheriff is concerned, we would postpone that until we have a better understanding or, or, or more broad perspective through the study of what um, the recommendations are for salaries throughout the, count, the county as a whole. Is that okay with everyone? Like I said, I'm going to recluse myself from those conversations. Okay. Um, so uh, moving on then, um, thank you, Mr. Pesoto. We appreciate you. that. Thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. Uh, the recommendations were for council president position of 25,000, uh, the vice president of 23, and the council members for 21. Anyone want to uh, engage in this conversation, this, this uh, specifics here? Yes, Josh. I'll say, of course, that obviously that you know we've already said that this uh, you know that this group did a good job in evaluating what the uh, uh, what the salary should be, what it looks like across the state. This is still very low. Um, obviously, this is uh, this hasn't been touched. It used to. It looks like it used to be done every four years. They would update the salaries for the council members. And at least the shows here and from '84 uh, on, but. We haven't touched this position since, well, before my wife was born, so quite a while. Um, 
so it'd be nice to be able to, uh, I think, to update this. To, uh, obviously, you want a high salary in these things because it's uh, you want people to view it as a job, as a position to come and that they take serious and seriously. And uh, I think that this is something that we probably, you know, it's not this. This is still would be very low for the rest of this compared to the rest of the state. But I'm okay with it still being one of the lowest in the state. Uh, this is the recommended uh, that they went forward, and I'm good with both the council president, vice president, and the member position itself. Good. Any other comments? Just referring back to Cecil County, they they have there's some they're very similar demographics. They're charged with the same the, the same tasks, and uh, their county council members make twenty five thousand, um, although they have they do not receive benefits, which is different from what come ago. Okay. Any other? All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do a consensus on the recommendation for each position as a whole and take all three at one time unless somebody wants to change any individual uh, category. But as is right now with the recommendation for the president, vice president, and the council members, um, those that, that would be in favor, we would start with. We'll, we'll start with uh, Councilman Dodd. Yeah, I, I realize that um, I haven't... Um, filed to run for office yet and uh, like Mr. Um, Hastings said the it's for the next council <clears throat> however the council has a, had an increase I, I want to say 1994 I don't know when your wife was born but that was funny um, so I, I'm going to um, recuse myself from voting on it right, Joe like I said before, I um, I have I am planning on um, filing and running for re-election, so I will recluse myself. But I, if I was to vote, I'd vote no um, on this matter. Um, this isn't a career. It's it's I think it's done to more help more to help the community. Um, I had one council member tell me he didn't even, he he didn't even know we got paid before he ran. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that John, John said he's, he said I didn't even know we got any pay, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how I look at this job. Um, grateful for the pay we get, um, but one thing nobody's mentioned through this whole process today is um, about the people that are paying the bill, and that's the citizens. You know we're going through um, pretty tough times as far as a lot of people with um, having to pay their bills. I know that a lot of people have got raises in the private sector and the, pu and, and the public sector too, um, but there's been a lot of people out of work, a lot, and I, I, I just can't see um, doing, doing raises right now. Um, I, I did go along with the county executive um, to a certain point. I'm not going to go to the 124. I would go to 100, but um, I just think this is the wrong time. Um, this, this body here... Uh, we can do as much as we want to or as least as we want to. I know in the past we had some council members that didn't show up to a lot of the meetings. They still got paid. Um, so um, I'm, I'm going to recluse myself, as I said, but if I was to vote, I would vote now. Thank you. Mr. Bill, before we get too far, uh, yeah. uh, just if council members, and, and Joe, this isn't a criticism or anything, or you or Larry, but if council members are recusing themselves, you could have the entire council running for re-election and this would you're going nowhere yeah we're going nowhere yeah yeah it wouldn't be it wouldn't make sense to even it, have the commission and recommendations because the no charter one's... says we have to point the commission the charter doesn't say we ever have to do anything finish, so, so i don't think it's necessary that they recuse themselves that's up to them but that's and paul I think may that's disagree but they, yeah, because but, right. it doesn't kick in until after the election that, that, which is my point right right at this point no one's elected i mean you know you, just because you're on the council I mean, it's the council's job to make these, you know, is to vote. So, you know, that's what the charter says. So. It would be a difference if you were voting to raise your salary right now. Exactly. Which, that nobody could I vote. I think that would be an issue. I understand no, that. You, and it's, it's, you know, it's each person's choice if they think they need to recuse on any vote or anything. Well, and let me see if you agree on this. If you recuse yourself, you don't comment. Yeah, because because you're saying you're not going to participate, okay. yeah. and that's what Mr. Holloway said. So you can strike my comments from the <laughs> <laughs> all, all of them. 
Uh, Vice President Davis. I have no problem with it. Councilman Ackley. So this is for the additional four thousand dollars for council members. I should make this sure. is for the president, vice president, and council. Okay. Unless you want to, unless you no, want to change anything. I think four thousand is fine. I'm fine with that. So you're okay with all three increases? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, Councilman Hastings. Okay. Councilman Kane. I'm fine with it. That chair is fine with it. So. We have a consensus on that, Mrs. Hurley? Yes. And that is a resolution. Is that, no, is that a resolution? That would be a legislative, legislative bill. bill. Okay. Charter legislative. says bill. Bill, right. Yeah. Which would require five votes, right? Uh, no, one of Congress. Okay, super it doesn't majority. require a supermajority. Okay. Yep. All right, so I think we could move that forward, Mrs. Hurley, if you'd like. Yep. For uh, the next meeting. Sure. Uh, and again, uh, to, with the council's uh, um, approval. We will postpone uh, the executive and the sheriff for now until uh, until we get a, a study from the executive, and uh, we'll we'll schedule something for March. That's okay. Okay. All right. Are we going to have in the salary study the sheriff? Uh, I'm not quite sure. The idea is really the perspective. The idea is to kind of get a perspective of what all the department heads are going to be making. I think, and I think that's really it, it couldn't hurt. Mr. Cannon, uh, yes. you say we would bring this back up in March. Yes. We're not going to do it in February. Well, I believe Mr. Pesota said it was going to be the second meeting in February is when we would yeah, get Yeah, he the, said the uh, presentation would be the second meeting in February. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, the next item on the agenda is the discussion of broadband, broadband uh, Mr. <laughs> Pesota. And uh, Mr. Monar, I believe, is there he is. Oh, you can stay. <clears throat> as uh, as the presentations get passed out, uh, I'd like to start if I could. Yes, Mr. Yes, uh, if everybody would just announce uh, who they are uh, while, while John we're... John Fasota, Acting County Executive. John Moon, our Director of IT for the County. Thank you, gentlemen. At the outset, I wish to express and reiterate to the Council and the public effect that effectively addressing Internet service to those in this county who are unserved has been and remains a top priority for the County Executive's Office. We are committed to and we will continue to explore all viable and economically feasible options. We acknowledge that this utility is critical to education, telehealth, and economic development. It is also my pleasure to inform you and the public uh, this afternoon of the result of an RFP or request for proposal offering which requested any qualified vendor providing internet service to respond to or identify the scope of work. That scope of work dealt specifically with the ability of that vendor to deliver broadband internet access to potential rural customers in areas we identified as being unserved. The vendor selected through the established RFP procurement process would be identified as a non-legally binding partner receiving a letter of support indicating the process the county went through and our conclusion. As an executive process, an RFP to identify a partner Internet Service Provider, or ISP, for this state grant requirement is an acceptable method to the Office of Statewide Broadband, or OSB, in determining the vendor which the county selected. A partnership with the local jurisdiction identified in a letter of support is a requirement for a vendor who is applying for this latest state broadband grant. The deadline for the ISP to submit their application to the OSB was this past Friday the 14th by close of business. This is a non-legally binding offer with no Wicomico County matching funds. No funding request is being made by the executive to the council for this state grant and there is no contracting for services. The application for grant funding is between the selected partner ISP and the OSB. With that, I'm pleased to ask John Monar, the IT director for the county, to present 
to you the details of the RFP, as well as an update on other broadband initiatives the Executive's Office has and is taking regarding the implementation of this emerging important utility. John? Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be here today. Um, I have a uh, PowerPoint presentation prepared for the public and the council uh, to go through um, everything Mr. Basota just discussed. Um, first slide here, uh, I'm going to go over the bullets of every, everything we're going to talk about today in the presentation, and at the end, I'll certainly open up the floor for any questions anyone might have. So we're going to go over an overview, overview of the Connect Maryland FY22 net, Network Infrastructure Grant Program. Then we'll, just, then we'll review the Connect Maryland FY22 Network Infrastructure Grant scoring criteria, give you a status of, the, of Wacomco County's involvement in rural broadband grants, provide you an update on additional rural broadband projects in Wicomico County, review of the county unserved target area map, review of Wicomico County's grant partnership request for proposal responses, and then we'll do some questions. So the Connect Maryland FY22 Network Infrastructure Grant. The state of Maryland approved $97.6 million in the FY22 budget for the Department of Housing and Community Development to support the Office of Statewide Broadband, or otherwise known as OSB, in its efforts to assist the expansion of broadband into unserved areas of Maryland. The funding source for this budget expense is the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA. The OSB will provide grants between 70 and 90 percent of the capital construction costs for major broadband infrastructure projects depending on the project's composition. Projects applied for are expected to serve significant areas of unserved households and businesses. Completed applications for grant funding between $1 million to $10 million were due to the OSB on January 14, 2022, this past Friday. Applicant eligibility. Only entities legally organized as one of the filing are eligible for funding. A Maryland local jurisdiction incorporated organization as recognized as a partner by the local jurisdiction. I have that highlighted because that's the route we took. <coughs> Any other legal entity, including a cooperative, private corporation, or limited liability company organized for a profit or not-for-profit basis that is recognized as a partner by the local jurisdiction. Matching fund requirements for the wired infrastructure project required match. Fewer than eight households per mile. 10% eligible construction cost. That's highlighted because that, that's how Wacomico County, that's the category Wacomico County falls into. Eight or more, but fewer than 15 households per mile, 20% of eligible con capital construction cost. 15 or more households per mile, 30% of eligible co capital construction cost. There's an exception to this match requirement. An exception to the match requirement may be made for applicants applying for federal funding and requesting that the federal funds are considered as match. Only eligible federal funding may be used as match. It is the applicant's responsibility to ensure the federal funds may be used for match for this program and the program's funding source. Hey, this is the FY22 Network Infrastructure Grant, and this is the scoring criteria pointing to the state. Need for service and project benefits. Ten points, the description of the PFSA, the proposed funding service area, community, the households being served, needs, and the benefits to be provided to the community by the project. The applicant experience, up to five points. Qualifications and ability of the key personnel who will construct, manage, and operate the broadband system. Include any past experiences and excess of operating a broadband system that is similar to the proposed broadband system. Local jurisdiction and public participation, up to four points. Document the local jurisdictional involvement in planning and implementation of the project. The application should include other evidence of local public involvement, such as activities, community meetings, public forums, and surveys. Preference will be given to applications that show support from residents, business, local, state, and federal interests shown to be within the PFSA applied for. Support letters provided, if any, should be from those located in the PFSA and should address specific needs and benefits that the writer believes 
they will receive from the proposed project. Network delivery speeds of the project. It's up to 10 points. Projects that propose speeds at or above the minimum network speeds as required will receive additional points. Points will be awarded for proposed networks meeting one of the five criteria. At least 100 megabit down, downstream by 20 megabit upstream. You don't get any points for that. Uh, at least 100 megabit downstream and 100 megabit upstream, three points. One gigabit downstream and greater than 100 megastream upstream, five points. Greater than one gigabit downstream and at least one gigabit upstream, 10 points. Affordability and service limitations, up to four points. Project providing equity programs such as low cost service options will receive additional points. Projects that do not impose data caps or other subscriber limitations such as speed reductions based on data futures usage will receive additional points. So low cost equity programs, two points, and no data or penalty for on service consumption is two points. Readiness to build, operate, and maintain the project, two points. Demonstration of the applicant's readiness to build as evidenced by the engineering and design contained within the system design portion of the application, provided construction cost estimate, secured financing if required, other approvals secured or in the process such as environmental, historic or FCC requirements and other thorough and complete project schedule. So in Wacomico County, this is uh, the status of uh, our rural broadband grant that uh, we uh, are working on or have been working on. So over the past year, Wacomico County began the process of collecting mapping data from various resources with the goal of creating a countywide map identifying areas that do not currently have access to wired broadband internet service. A map of target areas totaling more than 2,100 primary structures was developed. The county, to the best of its ability, determined that these target areas are unserved, i.e. they're lacking broadband speeds capable of providing at least 25 meg download, 3 meg upload megabits level of service. Through extensive research that evolved, among other things, speaking with internet service providers or ISPs with or without a presence in the county already, analyzing existing broadband lines in the county, signing a non-disclosure agreement to obtain information on whether these locations were unserved, reviewing various mapping data such as mobile Wi-Fi hotspot mapping information from the Wacomico Board of Education, Federal Communication Commission or the FCC broadband maps, county pictometry maps, and receiving input from various citizens in unserved areas. So, on October 25th, 2021, the OSB, the Office of Statewide Broadband, released the application package for the Connect Maryland FY22 Network Infrastructure Grant. Wacomico County then issued uh, request for proposal, an RFP, on November 19th, 2021, to form a non-legally binding partnership with an ISP and support, in order to support their applications for grants. Responses to the RFP were received from BlueSurf, Chop Tank Fiber, Mediacom, Simple Fiber, and Talkie Communications, and they were opened on December 10th, 2021. After evaluation, Talkie Communications was selected as the non-legally binding partner for grant applications and issued a letter of partnership slash support on January 5th, 2022. In collaboration with the county, Talkie Communications submitted two grant applications to the OSP for the Connect Maryland FY22 Network Infrastructure Grant Program for $20 million in potential funding. The OSB confirmed receipt of these applications on Friday, January 14th, 2022. Talkie Communications will use the FCC's Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, or otherwise known as RDOF, grant that they were awarded to supplement many of the fiber optic broadband projects in Wacomico County. And as part of the 10% match required for the Connect Maryland FY22 Network Infrastructure Grant, the FCC announced in December 
believe it was December 16th of 2021, that they completed the long form review of Talkie Communications and are ready to authorize funds for the RDOF grant. The potential grant funding from the OSB combined with the FCC's RDOF grant award would allow for more than 300 miles of fiber optic cable to be, or fiber optic to the premise, broadband internet service to be made available to more than 2,100 primary structures that are currently unserved in Wicomico County. So some additional broadband updates that are happening in the county. Maryland Broadband Cooperative received state funding for the build out of middle mile fiber optic to the Deer Creek neighborhood on the east side of the county. Talkie Communications will be constructing this middle mile fiber optic and making broadband internet service available to the residents along Morris Mill Road from Route 50 on the way to the Deer Creek neighborhood and its residents. Chop Tank Fiber. Utilizing Maryland Broadband Cooperative's middle mile fiber optic is now providing service to the plantation plantations and Webster Estate neighborhoods on the west side of the county. Bay Country Communications is finalizing the fiber optic broadband internet project in and around the Salisbury Air Airport, which includes the airport business park. Comcast recently completed broadband internet expansion to the businesses in the Westwood Commerce Park. SpaceX's Starlink low orbit satellite service continues to be an option for rural broadband. There are county residents and businesses using this service with very good results. Some residents who have signed up for the Starlink service are placed on a waiting list right now, which is partially due to the worldwide chip shortage. And that's, that's expected to improve in mid-2022. This map that's here, this is the, the broadband target map as pre previously discussed that we finalized on uh, for, for unserved uh, folks in the county. And this is the map of the 10 target areas that Talkie Communications has in their two applications to the Office of Statewide Broadband for the $20 million in potential funding. Can review the areas. We uh, the first area here, the crossroad area. Then we go down an area uh, two, which is the Athol Road area, area area. Area three, the Royal Oak Road area. Four, Whitehaven. Five, the Allen area. Six, the Wilton area. Seven, Mount Pleasant area. Eight, Powellville slash Mount Hermon Road area nine, North Pittsville area, and then 10, South Fruitland area. This is a matrix of the responses we received on the RFP. Um, they are sorted, the respondents here are sorted by the amount of premises that were uh, covered. Um, the second column here is the proposed project cost uh, slash grant funding requested to the state. Next column, the estimated cost per premise in thousands. The next column is the percent of taxpayer funding requested to cover the 10% match requirement of the grant. Next column is the entry, entry level residential monthly service fee. For instance, if somebody wanted to sign up for the service, this is the base fee, and this is the corresponding level of service for that base fee. Now, this column here with the upload and download speeds of that service, this is the, the basic package speed. Most of them go up to at least one, one gigabit up, up, uh, download or upload, or even more in some cases. And the last column is the uh, basic customer install fee. This is a one-time fee that if a customer signed up for the service, they would pay this one-time fee to get hooked up. Um, Talkie Communications, I have a little double asterisk here. This is, since they are putting in for $20 million, that was broken up into two $10 million applications uh, for funding. Um, 
this uh, single asterisk here uh, uh, in regards to the entry level monthly fee. Many ISPs, and I know Talkie does, they participate in the affordable connectivity program, which will subsidize up to $30 per household if they're qualified by the FCC. <coughs> And the state of Maryland is also matching an, ad an additional $15 if they qualify there as well. And, and uh, I'll certainly take any questions that anyone might have. Questions? John, can you back up to certainly. the slide you just had up? Oh. There you go. Yeah, uh, in column number two, you were pointing out they made the application for $20 million. I guess my real quick question is then that three and a quarter million gap. Yes. So who's responsible and where does that come from? That is the responsible party is Talkie Communications. So Talkie is responsible for that Correct. three and a quarter. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's, and that's so that I'm clear. Uh, that's what they're saying that they're going to that they are allowed to use the first RDOF grant award to offset that cost. Well, they're yeah, well they're going for twenty million dollars to ten million dollars. So ten percent of that ten, uh, they still have three point two five million to cover plus another uh, ten percent of twenty million, two million. So talkie has since they were awarded uh, RDOF funding by the FCC, they are that funding, which I believe in this case is $1.6 million, they're, they're, they are using that as part of the match requirement, which is allowable. It, if That's an exception for the match requirement in this grant. And, and I guess where I'm going with all this is, is there a, re a requirement from the county? There is no funding requirement. There is no funding requirement from the county. Yes. And also, uh, we put in the uh, RFP that there would be no uh, grant funding from the county. Is that correct? There would be, yeah, the county would not be providing any matching funding. Yeah. That was going to be the responsibility <coughs> of the ISP submitting the proposal and eventually the, the application mm -hmm. to the state. Um, If we're not giving them any money, and I look, you said there's other broadband companies already operate in the county. Yes. Why do we need to go through Talkie? What, what was the, why, why we had to do an agreement with them if the companies can come in and just go in and put broadband in? Well, yeah, anybody can come and put broadband in the county uh, if they want to pay for all of it themselves. Well, isn't that what the other companies are doing? What are they, where are they getting their money from? The same place? I don't know. Where they, uh, they're funding... Either they're funding it themselves or they're using, some of them are using mail-in broadband cooperative backbones. Um, but right now, they're, it, no, I'm not aware of any grant money that other ISPs are using to install broadband in the county. Again, my question is, if they, those companies don't need our permission to operate broadband, why did Talkie? They don't need permission from us either. So why are we making an agreement with them to? It's not an agreement. It's what a, is? It? It's a letter of support, and it's not. It's non legally binding. It's just a requirement that the state grant requires as part of their application process, which is still ongoing. Their procurement process is still ongoing, and we. This just happens to be a part of it that the those that are applying for that state grant money have to uh, have to comply with. So uh, for, my thing for this particular grant, the very first eligibility for for the applicant I have it here I have it highlighted is an incorporated organization organization that is recognized as a partner by the local jurisdiction so talkie through the RFP that we put out has been selected as the partner by Wacomico County to be the applicant to the state for this particular grant Councilman Davis, again, to your point, uh, this is where we're finding that the free market system, they, they've always been, with broadband uh, being out there for a decade or decades, they've always had the ability to provide service to, to those that uh, uh, are unserved. However, it's just not been economically feasible to do so. And now that these grants exist, that's what they're going after to help offset that cost. And maybe to try maybe to help uh, Councilman Davis's answer that question some, 
if I'm understanding this correctly, these are the unserved areas, so you don't have Maryland Broadband's backbone to use, correct? Um, or not directly? Yes, these are the unserved areas. In some cases, yes, uh, Maryland Broadband the Cooperative uh, does have middle mile backbone that is reaching out close to those areas. So that those, to a point. those backbones to a point. Correct. Right. Yep. So those backbones will certainly be utilized in uh, getting br broadband service to rural areas. My question would be: um, <clears throat> You're not going to be talking about broadbanding unless you're talking about some kind of funding. So with the letter of support and with the executive support of talking communications how much funding are we talking about that's going to be coming to Wicomico County for the benefit of the uh, constituents um, you have a comment in here while this does not completely close the gap in the di digital divide I'm sure that with all the federal funding now the citizens of Wicomico County would see a complete closing of that gap so are we missing some targets are we not getting the maximum funding that we could possibly be allowed what is the investment that we're talking about? How much? To, to in, in order to cover everybody in Wicomico County? Well, based on where, what the, um, based on what the RFP was, what talking communications, I'm assuming, said they were going to commit to, and there's some kind of cash reserves they have to prove. Um, when the application, I'm assuming, was put in on January 14th, uh, what numbers are we talking about as far as what will be coming to Wicomico County, either through talking themselves or the federal government? Well, overall, potentially, the, pro the overall project is, let me, uh, yeah. the overall project that Talkie proposed is $23.25 million. So if the state approves and provides funding on the two $10 million applications, that's, that, that would be uh, $20 million from the state and then the difference from Talkie, and even and, and there's RDOL funding too in that number from the federal government. All of all of that grant funding is federal government. The the state's infrastructure grant is funded by ARPA, so it's federal money coming to the state. The state is putting a grant together and accepting applications too. So the, max, uh, the maximum on this grant, I believe, was ten million. Ten million per application. So are we are we actually receiving the maximum? No. Well, we don't know. That, that, the, the process is now, as of Friday, is in the state's hand. So now it, it, now it goes between the state and Talkie Communications, and the state goes through its competitive review process, and then at some point, they have not said when, they will announce funding awards. Um, yes, John. I, I know it gets confusing, but uh, uh, so if, looking at this, this chart, um, uh, to me, clarifies it. We put in a, an RFP and we said, hey, look, here's our map of, of, of our nine areas, and we subsequently added a tenth area. Uh, based on all that criteria, the FCC uh, 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 information, census data, Board of Education information, our, our in-house uh, uh, collection of data from, from uh, Maryland Broadband as well as ISPs that have, pr have provided where their trunk lines are. So that's how we, we uh, came up with that map. And we said, we've identified 2,200 uh, uh, properties in, this, in Wicomico County. Uh, I, uh, ISPs, how can you best address these 2,200 houses? And that's what you get. So we've got uh, one through five. Uh, they come back. They, they, they've seen what we're asking, and, they, and, and one comes back and says, well, we can take care of 132 of them. We can take care of 190 of them. We can take a 30, 347, or 367. So that's a good snapshot as to the results that we got with our, this is our request. We went 20, we, what can you do to give us to, uh, service to, to, to potential customers of 2,200? And that's what you get, and, and the cost associated with it. And as and, and there, why I said before that we had specifically put in the grant that we weren't going to be putting any match to it. We still had a, a couple of respondents that said they, you know, we, we want a, a match to. So. How, how do you explain the huge difference between four of the five ISPs only only saying they're going to make a you know minimal commitment of a few million, and Talkie saying oh we're going to do 23 million. How is that? How, how does that happen? What is it that Talkie Communications bring to the table with 20 million that you have four other ISP servers that say we can only do five? Where, where did they see a, such a difference? 
Well, you know, that's what we asked for. I think. What did you ask for? We asked for coverage of over 2,100 primary locations, and their response was, we can meet that. So are you saying that the four ISP servers said that they could do it with only two to five million, and no. Talkie said we need 20? No. No, that, no that's a, that, that second column is saying, so, so we put the RFP, we said we want 2,200, and, and, and the majority of them said, this is what we can do. This is what, we, I'm, well, that's, that's, that's the what way I read will, it. That's what they were willing to do. That was yeah. their response. Is it what they can do? Maybe they yeah. could do more. I don't know. But that was what they were. What can they the economically feasible, but feasibility what, wise do? How, how can there be such a disparity between one ISP yeah. and four other major ISPs? Good question. But I know when you look at Talkie, I think you also have to take in consideration their RDOF grant funding that they received. Yeah. And that they were went through a long form process, review process with the FCC that was very in depth. And the FCC said, you know what, we looked at everything and you're good to go. We're gonna send you all the, and it's a significant amount of money. It's, it's, it's a lot more than 23.5 million to do build outs in, in not just the state of Maryland, but in Delaware. But uh, I, I think they felt that they could do the project, so. Oh, and if you, if you take into account also the estimated cost per premise uh, at, at uh, you see those in thousands, uh, that coming back again to the uh, uh, economic model without any kind of grant money, that's the kind of money that an, an individual ISP is looking at per residence to, uh, that they have to eventually make back once they provide service uh, to that location. That's why, again, we have so many uh, unserved areas in, in our rural areas uh, that uh, uh, it's just not been economically feasible in the past for uh, ISPs to, to address. So with the RDOF funding, literally no ISP in the, in the state of Maryland can compete with Talkie Communications. I, I wouldn't say that. No, I mean, there's, there's certainly other, pro as I stated, there's other projects going on in the county, and there's other ISPs continuing to build. That RDOF funding that they won in that reverse auction, uh, that just helps them supplement uh, build outs across the state. It doesn't cover all the cost, it just it's, it supplements a percentage of it. I don't know the exact percentage of it. Talkie would know that, but I don't know. Yes. I'm trying to, I know this is all complicated, so I'm trying to make sure and fit it all in my head, but. It, I know if talking it, they they already have to provide the service, right? To they won the the RDOC, the auction, right? So, I guess in my kind of question, why work? Would you not work with other? Uh, you know, would you not try and work with I guess other ISPs? And why? I guess are we we picked one right within this process? Is that correct? And then. I know, I know other, some of the other counties around have worked actually with, they've provided letter of support and other to support the work that I guess the other ISPs were doing in that area. In my mind, I guess I'm trying to figure out, well, first of all, a couple of things that pop out. First of all, the, the exact question that was just raised, how do you compete if, there's, if they've already gotten all this money? And then second, does it, can they actually compete? I mean, I, I saw the one uh, article that was put out for, uh, with Worcester County that, you know, the talkie basically had said they'd contracted, they'd move in one direction and then came back and say, hey, no, actually, it turns out we can't afford it. You know, and I only mentioned that because, you know, was it a couple years ago, we mentioned at a Tri-County Council meeting, who is this random talkie company and do they really have the ability to get things done? Do, have they, I mean, has talkie done any, do they have any projects done in Wicomico County so far or is this the first time? They do not have any in Wacomco so far. Their first one will be the Deer Creek build out on the east side of the county. They talkie exists right now. They already have build outs in, in Worcester County, uh, Kent County, and Queen Anne's County. And because of the auction, how much how many houses do they have to reach, I guess, with that within this on the Ardolph? Yeah. Auction? I don't know the exact numbers in Wicomico County. Quick, 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 um in my conversations with you, quite a few of those uh, areas that we identified had already been identified uh, by Talkie in that original RDOF grant. Yeah, and, also, and also this particular grant speeds up the process. The original RDOF grant was with a six year build out. This makes it a, a this a particular year. grant is a three year build out. Uh, and, and to uh, uh, Councilman Hastings point, um, uh, 
I saw that, uh, that article, and, and, and be it this particular ISP that we're talking about or, or anyone that had gotten uh, matching funds uh, to any degree, matching county taxpayer funds from any county, uh, if there are uh, overruns, which there are always naturally overruns in projects, uh, all the more reason for there not to be county matching funds in there because the responsibility for those overruns then would be on behalf of the ISP. Um, so, and uh, uh, so. I, I mean, I agree. Talkie does have uh, somewhat of an advantage having those RDOF funds and being able to use those as a match for this particular grant. Now, it's my understanding that once they are used for a particular grant, you can't use them for another grant. So, um, you, you, you kind of got to, they have to pick where they want to use them and be strategic in that, in that selection. Um, as far as cost, I know you mentioned that article. Uh, I think I read that same article you mentioned, and I think anybody in, in the fiber optic or ISP business knows that certainly in the last year to two years, um, there's been increases in everything, material, labor, all that has increased. So I don't think that's anything, I don't think that's new information in, in the field. I think that's common knowledge. Well, 30% is significant though. Yeah. Yeah, but I, 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 I see that in my department. I, I know stuff that, that we buy every day, some stuff twice as expensive as it was a year ago. So I, I would anticipate um, that call, somebody who budgeted for something two years ago or even a year ago, the, the numbers are definitely going to increase. Just one after. Um, I just thank you for putting together this very nice graphic organizer. Um, and I... <laughs> I just, um, I was looking at the map and I noticed that Waterview, Nanticoke area is not prioritized. And I don't know, I, and this is, this is part of the FCC map, right? And they're not, you found other pockets that FCC hasn't, that has said they're not priority areas, but they are here. Sure, if you look at the map, there's some, some light, uh, some darker green and shaded areas. Those, mm -hmm. I believe, if I remember correctly, um, are Ardolf areas, so they right. were they are areas that will eventually be built out by Talkie as okay. well. Okay. Um, when you say which area were you? The Waterview Nanticoke. So it's um, all the way, all the very way down, tip there. Yeah. Down in here. Yes, that's where like Roaring Point Campground, Sandy Hill. Yes. Well, we the Comcast is down in there, and uh -huh. and since. We knew that Maryland Broadband is currently building middle mile fiber all the way down into that area, uh -huh. um, which gets a lot of that, uh, which gets broadband deep into that section. Mm -hmm. um, that that kind of wasn't a huge priority in this particular grant. Uh, and, and we also had to look at, many of these areas didn't have anything. There's no yeah. middle mile to them or nothing. And we also considered um, the mapping information we received from the Board of Education of where they had to hand out MiFi hotspots to students and teachers. And if I remember correctly, there wasn't, I don't remember that being an area that was handed out a lot to. Well, so Some of these other areas were, were more significant. And the reason I mentioned that area is because there's no cell reception there. So the hotspots right. didn't work. Well, I, and so you had all yeah, of Manico I, I, I and think Waterview. in that area down there, I think that the the predominantly uh, cell coverage is, I believe, AT and T. Yes, yeah, and they have so I think a, I, and I don't know what uh, carrier was handed. I don't know if it was Verizon. Verizon. So AT and T hotspots would probably work better than Verizon's yeah. all the way down there. Um, but uh, that's the reason, and and I don't. Some of those areas might be shaded green already, so there might I, there probably RDOF funding in that area, if I remember. So there there's any those are they, they might be on the six year timeline yeah. with the RDOF grant funding. And this is I mean this isn't really related to broadband, but the the cell tower issue in that area and possibly getting one there that is a different conversation, but. Yep. Well, we yeah. uh, we do appreciate you gentlemen coming in and presenting this to us. We'll certainly have you back again, uh, depending on you know what the council may choose to do. Yeah. And uh, again, thank you very much.